Hello and welcome to this lecture video about FPGA implementation of machine learning algorithms. For high-level design, frameworks can be used. And uh, we're now at the beginning of the year 2021. These frameworks are still in development, but uh, probably in the future they will be a good choice for design of FPGAs. And uh, therefore this video gives you a demonstration of such a framework. And to do so, I hand you over to a student of our university. Hello, my name is Fabio Protopapa, and I will show you the installation and the use of the HLS 4ML framework. This video consists of six sections. First, I will show you a selection of available frameworks and the basic concept of HLS 4ML. Then, we will move on to the installation of this framework. To gain a better understanding, of its way of working and to show more advanced techniques we will build a curious model from scratch and convert it with HLS 4ML. Then the compilation and build process will be shown again in a summarized form. The results of the synthesis will be compared under section 5. And finally we will draw a conclusion. Now let's have a look at some available tools. In January 2021 there is, for example, VTA, which is part of the TVM project that combines different deep learning compilers, Hadoop, a tool for converting convolutional neural networks to an FPGA design, and of course HLS 4ML, which we will now take a closer look at. As shown in the illustration, HLS 4ML translates neural networks written in frameworks like TensorFlow or PyTorch and converts them into an HLS representation. Important configurations are the reuse factor and the model precision, as well as the use of optimization techniques. The produced IP core can extend more complex designs or be used as a kernel for the CPU coprocessing. Let's continue with the installation of HLS 4ML. First of all, we have to take a look at the requirements and set up our system. The recommended operating system is Ubuntu 18.04. Other Unix or Linux based environments might work as well. Useful installation guides are also listed in the repository previously shown. To check the installed version of the operating system, we can use the cat command to fetch the LSB release. HLS 4ML needs Vivado to perform a high-level synthesis. Recommended is version 2019.2. An installation guide for this release is also listed in the repository. The freely available version is for our purposes sufficient. Later on, we will need the installation path of the Vivado tool. The path is located in the root directory, often inside the tools folder but also happens to be under optional software. Here you have to check your installation. Also, we will need Python 3, as well as the WENF package. WENF will allow us to create a virtual environment. These packages can be easily installed with the yapt command shown on the slide. Here we will be using Python 3.6. Now it's time to get Git and to clone the repository. Before creating a virtual environment, we will change the current working directory. Then, by executing the WENF package, we are creating a new virtual environment called WENF underscore HLS 4ML. To activate it, we are using the source command. This allows us to separate our system-wide used Python environment and the HLS 4ML installation. Now it's time to update pip. Python's package management system. To follow along with the Jupyter Notebook, we need to set it up first. Therefore, we are executing the pip command to install the Notebook package. After that, we need to make the newly created virtual environment available to Jupyter. Now we start a Jupyter session by running the command Jupyter Notebook. The installation showed up to this point usually takes place inside the console. As of now, we have completed our basic installation. 
Let's check the location of our Python interpreter with the which command. It should be located inside the folder of our virtual environment. Now we can install HLS4ML with pip. Here we are using the profiling flag. This will load some more dependencies, but will allow us the use of more advanced techniques to analyze our model. That's it! HLS4ML is ready to use. We will continue with the creation of a Kiros model from scratch. We will build a deep learning model for jet tagging, a technique used at CERN to process the LHC datasets. I recommend to check out the tutorial linked on the slide. They also show the usage of optimization procedures not covered in this video. Ok, let's get some more dependencies. Now we will import TensorFlow, which was installed together with HLS 4ML, SkyKit Learn and some other useful libraries. To later save our data, we will create a new folder and fetch the LHC dataset to identify the JET clauses. This dataset is freely available from OpenML. It's using 16 input features to identify 5 different clauses. Let's inspect our obtained data. It has, as expected, 16 input features and outputs 5 classes. It contains 830,000 examples. After running some pre-processing, we can save the data to our newly created folder. Now it's time to define our model. It consists of 3 fully connected layers with 64 and 2 times 32 neurons. The output layer is activated with a softmax function. The model summary shows the structure as well as the number of parameters needed. So our model has 4389 weights to train. We will train the model over 30 epochs and save it in H5 and JSON format. It achieves an accuracy of about 75%. Our model is now ready to make predictions. So we will for our test data and plot the arrow C curve. It achieves an accuracy of 75% as expected. The arrow C graph compares the false positive and true positive rates of the five classes depending on their prediction probability. The true positives are shown on the x-axis and the false positives on the y-axis. Here a shift of the graph to the lower right corner is a sign of a better performance. It's time to continue with the HLS conversion and to have a look at some techniques to analyze our HLS model. But first we need to import the HLS 4ML library. Then we need to make the Vivaru path known inside the Python environment. HLS 4ML allows us to manipulate the model settings. We will do it through the Python code. The configuration can be extracted out of the model with some ready to use methods. We can set the granularity of our configuration. Let's first have each layer individually. Now we are able to manipulate every layer parameter separately. To be able to use advanced techniques we need the profiling module. But there is an import error with the QKeras library. So we need a workaround and change some files. This won't affect us as long as we don't want to use QKeras. Let's import the profiling module and create an HLS representation out of the model and the configuration file. Here we can also specify the FPGA we want to target. First let's have a look at the created HLS representation. As we can see, the bit width is 16 and 6 for all layers. Now it's time to run some profiling. We will get a graphical representation of the numerical values used for the weights and activations per layer. The grey boxes indicate the range we can cover with the chosen bit width. To compare the performance of the Kiros 
an HLS model, we need to compile the HLS representation and run some predictions with the test data. Let's plot the ROC curve and compare the occurrences. We can see that the HLS model does not deviate much. To have a comparison with a different model, we will change the bit width of the first layer and create the HLS representation again. The loaded configuration behaves like a Python dictionary and can therefore be edited like one. The plot the visual structure confirms that the changes were successful and the profiling shows a reduced numerical coverage of the first layer. To extract the predictions for each layer, we can use the trace method. Therefore, we have to adjust the configuration, create the HLS model and compile it again. The trace method will now run the predictions and store the results for each layer. And for general comparison, we will run afterwards the prediction method for the whole model. The tracing needs to be done as well for the Keras model. There is also a ready-to-use method available for it. Now we can access each layer separately and read out the predicted values. A comparison of the modified model with the Curious model shows a slightly worse performance. To show the whole process in a summarized form, the modified model is deleted and recreated with all layers set to a bit width of 8 and 2. Therefore, we change the granularity to model, convert the model into an HLS representation and compile it. To observe the Vivado logs while building, we can use the tail command. And finally, we will build both models, the unchanged from the beginning and the new modified one. Now let's have a look at the results, starting with the modified model. Let's just compare the resource estimation between these two models. The resource utilization for the 8-bit model shows an estimation of 5 MAC units, 50,000 flip-flops, and 187,000 lookup tables. The estimation for the unchanged 16-bit model indicates a requirement of 3,900 MAC units, 270,000 flip-flops, and 85,000 lookup tables. So the use of a reduced bit width is therefore a more economical approach. And yet, both designs do not fit the selected FPGA, as is clearly shown by the percentage of utilization. But let's have the last performance comparison. This clearly shows that the 8-bit model is no longer comparable with the Curious model, since the false positive rate is extremely high for all classes as illustrated in the left half of the figure. This video shows the power of frameworks. Even complex models, such as those in the field of deep learning, can be analyzed and transformed in a user-friendly way. In particular, we have looked at some features of HLS 4ML and therefore created an entry point for the use of this framework. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.